50 million years ago, the fossils found on Sheppey beaches tell us Sheppey was a tropical paradise. Fossils of nipper palm seeds, tropical vegetation, straight tusked elephants, crocodiles, tiny horses known as the dawn horse and giant terror birds have all been found in midst of cliffs and points towards Sheppey's tropical past. Following the last glacial period, Sheppey emerged much as you see it today. Startling Bronze Age discoveries at Kingsborough show that Sheppey was occupied from early prehistoric times by Neolithic man. More than 5,700 years ago, a thousand years before the pyramids were constructed, Neolithic man built earthworks on the Isle of Sheppey. These causeway enclosures were more complex, much larger, and 600 years older than the first stage of Stonehenge. The first written record of Sheppey is found in Greek historian Ptolemy's Graphic Hophagesis, which was written in 161 AD. Ptolemy refers to Sheppey as Tolopis, Gate of the Thames River. The Romans named Sheppey Insula Ovium, the Island of Sheep. Minster Abbey was built by Queen Sexburger in 664 AD and has been a place of worship for over 1,400 years. It was built on top of significant Roman buildings. When the Romans left, the Vikings came. They came to burn, murder and plunder, attacking Minster Abbey and putting the nuns to the sword. Then they came to stay and turn Sheppey into a Viking stronghold with fortifications at Sherlin, Minster and Queenborough. When the Saxons came to Sheppey, they renamed it Skeppy. After the Battle of Hastings, the land on Sheppey, which wasn't owned by the church, was granted to the Norman Knights de Sherland and de Northwold, who took their names from that of their property. King Harold's wife, Queen Edith of the Swan Neck, had been educated by the nuns at Minster. She identified Harold's mutilated body after the Battle of Hastings and fled to Sheppey and took refuge at Minster. In 1361, King Edward III and Queen Philippa ordered a castle built on the site of the old Saxon remains at Queenborough. In 1666, the Dutch military engineer, Sir Bernard de Gom, was sent to Sheness to upgrade the fort at the Sheerness. In 1667, one year later, when the work on the fort was still incomplete, a Dutch fleet of 80 ships attacked and burnt it to the ground. Along the streets of Queenborough, Blue Town and Sheness walked all of England's great seafarers, captains and admirals. Sir Francis Drake, the first Englishman to circumnavigate the world. Sir Jack Hawkins, privateer and slaver. Lord Howard, Lord High Admiral of Queen Elizabeth I's fleet, which defeated the Spanish Armada. Sir Humphrey Gilbert, who founded England's first colony. The Duke of Clarence, who became King William IV and was known as the Sailor King. England's most famous mariner, Admiral Horatio Nelson. Vice Admiral Cuthbert Collingwood, who led the second column in the Royal Sovereign at the Battle of Trafalgar and assumed command of the British fleet on Nelson's death. Captain James Cook, who completed his first round the world voyage with the renowned botanist Sir Joseph Banks, in which he circumnavigated New Zealand and mapped the east coast of Australia. Captain Alexander Hood, who accompanied Captain James Cook in the resolution on his second voyage of exploration, which departed Sheness on the 21st of June, 1772, he fought at the Battle of Chesapeake. Admiral Richard Howe, who helped to capture Philadelphia, broke the siege of Gibraltar and quelled the Spithead Mutiny. Admiral Thomas Cochrane, who Napoleon called the Sea Wolf. Cochrane was appointed Vice Admiral of the Chilean Navy and was successful in gaining independence for Chile. He took command of the Brazilian Navy and as a result of his efforts, Brazil gained its independence. Rear Admiral Sir Thomas Trowbridge, who fought alongside Nelson at the Battle of Cape St. Vincent and the Battle of the Nile. Captain Constantine John Phipps, 2nd Baron Mulgrave, 
who set off on a voyage towards the North Pole in the racehorse and carcass, reaching within 10 degrees of the North Pole before being forced back by ice. One of the midshipmen was a young Horatio Nelson. Captain William Bly, perhaps best remembered for mutiny on the bounty. Shenis grew around the dockyard as three distinctly individual townships, Blue Town, Mile Town and Marine Town. These would soon merge to form Shenis. When the railway came to Shenis in 1860, it terminated at Blue Town. In 1883, it was extended to its present day terminus at Shenis. To distinguish between the two Shenis stations, the new station was called Shenis on Sea. Sir Edward Banks conceived Shenis to be an elegant spa town. Paddle steamers arrived, carrying thousands of trippers from London. In 1878, the paddle steamer Princess Alice, returning from Shenis to London, was in a collision with the loss of over 650 lives. The number of visitors coming to Shenis by boat from London declined dramatically. Sir Edward Banks' dream of an elegant spa town would be unfulfilled as developers built affordable, honest homes for dockyard workers.